Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the major news developments from across the world. Our headlines. Civil rights groups sue Donald Trump for violence on protesters at a photo op. Turkish parliament expels three opposition legislators who may be arrested. Uruguayan workers strike over government's neoliberal push. Greek teachers gear up for strike against government's education bill. We begin with an update from the ongoing protests against police violence and racism in the US. A lawsuit was filed against US President Donald Trump along with other top officials of his administration on Thursday. The American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU, announced that it, along with other civil rights groups, was filing the lawsuit on behalf of Black Lives Matter. The lawsuit charges Trump of violating constitutional rights and is related to violence by law enforcement agencies in the US capital Washington DC on Monday. The violent eviction at Lafayette Square, adjacent to the White House on Monday, with tear gas and other weapons, wounded dozens and led to the arrest of over 800 people in a single day. It was reportedly done to clear the path for Trump to walk up to the historic St. John's Episcopal Church, adjacent to the square, for a photo op with the Bible. Apart from the President, other federal officials named as defendants in the lawsuit are US Defense Secretary Mike Esper, Attorney General William Barr, and the Director of the Secret Services, James M. Murray. The lawsuit alleges that these officials, particularly the President, conspired to violate the constitutional rights of the protesters. In our In Focus section, we bring you footage from the ground in the United States from our friends at Breakthrough News. They talk to those taking part in the protests and the relatives of some of the victims. My name is Dion Smith. I'm from Stockton, California. My son was murdered by two Stockton police and the sheriff. Uh, my son's name is James Rivera, 16 years old, unarmed. He was executed a day before his 17th birthday. Ms. Smith, what was it that brought you all the way from Stockton, California here to Minneapolis, Minnesota? When I heard the cry of Floyd, when he says, Mama. And when I was watching the video, I had to watch it twice. And I said, I have to come because he had called for the mothers. And that's why I'm here. What would justice look like for you in cases like this? When we start seeing officers being put in prison for murder. Tell us the loved one you're here standing for. Yes, my name is D. Friday Hall. My son is Kobe Friday. He was executed August the 16th, 2016 in Stockton, California, by Officer David Wells. And the nature of the assassination was a mistaken identity. So actually, my son was going to the corner store, and he was pursuing a suspect, and he didn't have a visual he didn't have a digital, he didn't have a picture of the person that he was looking for. My son had dreads, the guy had dreads. My son had on a white tee, he had on a white tee. So he shot my son, he shot my son down and he killed him. So I just wanna say that I'm gonna fight for my family, I'm gonna fight for me, and I'm gonna stand until every breath is out of my body. So if you could, just tell us your name and the family members you're here standing for. Hi, my name is Paulette Quinn. I'm Philip Quinn's mother. He was killed on 9-24-15. I called the um, police to have him come help me because he was suicidal and I needed help to help him get um, medical attention. Instead, they came with guns drawn and they shot him. They said that he would lunge forward, but he didn't. And then when he was on the ground, I told the officer McGuire, you have him down now, please don't kill him. But he did ended up shooting him anyways. They left him laying on the ground and wouldn't let me go comfort him. And I was like, he was like right here and I was like across the street sitting on the curb. And right then and there, I just lost everything in my whole soul. I, I don't know what else to say about it, but I would really appreciate justice for some of us anyways, even if I won't get it. Let George Floyd's family get it, please. And what would justice look like for you in cases like what you've seen? For um, the cops to stop letting the cops get away with murder. 
Because just because they're law enforcement doesn't give them the right that they can just kill us and thinking that nothing's going to happen. We need stuff to happen, not just justice. We need action. Could you tell us your name and tell us about the loved one that you lost, please? Okay, my name is um, Chantel Brooks. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Um, my son was Michael Wesley, shot and killed by Chicago police June 16, 2013. Uh, he was running away from the police and he got shot in the back. They, just, they tried to justify it, saying that he had two guns. One was an AK-47 and one was a handgun. But it was way impossible because he had on gym shorts and running. When we asked uh, Superintendent Eddie Johnson to uh, present the tape to us, uh, me and uh, William Calloway, um, he showed us the video. And it clearly showed that he didn't have a gun or he didn't point a gun at any police officer or anything. Um, we haven't got any justice at all. They closed my case without me even knowing. And also, my, like I said, my son was 15 years old. So, you know, this is just wow. You know, when the police kill, it's like it just gets swept under the rug. So, um, we didn't want it to come to this, like all the violence and stuff, but what more can we ask for? Like I said, my son been dead for, since 2013. And we've been out here, boots on the ground, steady moving forward, trying to have peaceful protests and stuff like that. But then when buildings and things get burned down, people want to say that, you know, we're um, wild and hooligans and all that type of stuff. But um, we're just going to keep fighting for justice. We plan on going to Washington, D.C. next year. We was planning on going this year, but due to all the stuff that's been going on, we couldn't make it. But next year we're going and we're making a stand because we have to stop this killing of our people like this. Please subscribe and watch Breakthrough News, an independent media organization based in the U.S., which highlights the demands and the struggles of the working class and people's movement. In our next story, the Parliamentary Council of Turkey's Grand National Assembly on Thursday expelled three opposition party MPs. Two of the expelled MPs, Leila Guven and Musa Fariso Gulari, are members of the People's Democratic Party or the HDP. The other, Enis Berberoglu, is a member of the Republican People's Party or the CHP from Istanbul. The two HDP MPs have been convicted of being members of the banned militant group Kurdistan Workers' Party of the PKK. Guven and Fariso Gulari are now set to serve prison sentences of six and nine years each. Guven has been on an 80-day hunger strike against the solitary confinement of PKK's founder, Abdullah Okalan. Barbaroglu, on the other hand, has been sentenced to prison for a term of 70 months. He was convicted in 2018 for providing a journalist with footage showing Turkish intelligence ferrying weapons to rebel groups of the Free Syrian Army. With the expulsion, the parliamentarians will be stripped of the immunity. All three MPs had sentences against them upheld at Turkey's highest court of appeals. Opposition MPs accuse the ruling Justice and Development Party or the AKP of being the enemy of democracy. The HDP parliamentary leadership called the move a pro-government coup. Uruguayan workers went on a four-hour national strike on Thursday and demonstrated in the capital Montevideo. The mass action was in protest against the Urgent Consideration Law, or the LUC, that is being promoted by the ruling right-wing government of President Luis Lacalpu. The LUC is a neoliberal package of 476 articles that will affect various public sectors such as health, education, housing, social security, economy and employment. The unions say that the law favours big companies and will affect the generation of employment through domestic industries. The union leaders have questioned the priorities of the national government and the promotion of such a law in the midst of a pandemic. Under the slogan of the urgency is the people, protesters wore face masks and maintained social distancing. Thousands of citizens and workers participated. A massive demonstration was carried out outside the headquarters of the General Assembly while the Senate was debating the vote on the said law. The call for the strike and the mobilization was given by the Trade Union Confederation, the PIT-CNT. And in our last story, teachers in Greece are gearing up for another mobilization against the conservative government's new education bill. Teachers and staff unions, along with the All Workers Militant Front or the PAME, have called for strikes across Greece on June 9th in protest against the neoliberal reforms in education. The proposed legislation by the ruling New Democracy government in Greece has attracted widespread opposition. The bill plans to introduce massive fund cuts for schools, privatize university departments, and increase class sizes. Trade unions have argued that the bill will put great deal of pressure on students as it will introduce measures that will put exams at the centre of the schooling process. There will also be compulsory transfers of students to increase class sizes. The government will also set up harsh disciplinary and surveillance measures for students, 
including a controversial move to install cameras inside classrooms. It will also lead to job losses for many educators once class sizes increase, as it will leave hundreds of educators redundant. It will also put into process a corporate style evaluation process which will punish schools for not living up to certain standards and will affect poorer students the most. That's all we have in this episode of the International Daily Roundup. We'll be back on Monday with the latest news from across the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah, cantar, que vamos a triunfar.